you find the two characters I wanted to kind of lift up today. Joseph being an example of the negative and Jesus being the positive. Morris deals with this matter of pride. This matter of pride is a subject that needs to be dealt with. Pride is probably the worst sin that you could possibly commit. It is the first one uh, that the devil committed when he was directed to the choir. And uh, pride consumed him to the point where he wanted to be God. He didn't want to be like God. He wanted to be God. Pride, pride, then is something we need to look at. Uh, real spiritually, I, I was thinking, I don't need to preach on pride in my church because none of my members suffer from pride. It's insulting to suggest that a member of Bethany is proud. But if you think you don't qualify to be proud, that's probably a sign you need to look at it real closely. Pride. Proverbs says, pride goes before destruction and hearty spirit before a fall. Pride uh, is something that's easily disguised. And once you realize, I think that you are immune to pride, here's a sign you need to take a close look at it. You start talking about your destiny. Your God-given destiny is really to help people. Helping people. That's, that's really what we're here for. Helping people. Look at somebody and say, helping people. Helping people. And, and if you got somebody who you feel like you're superior to, you think you know more than they know uh, better than they are, that's a sign that you're suffering from pride. The thing about God, he tests us from time to time. Like he tests Joseph, he also tests us. Yeah. And, and this matter of being tested is something we need to become familiar with. But with God, God never flaunts us. If you don't pass the test, he just lets you take it over again. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that again. God doesn't hand out else. If he did, a lot of us would have flunked out a long time ago. But he just keeps giving you the test over and over until you pass. Now you don't understand Reverend J.P. They'll get it on the way home. They'll get it on the way home. Let me start and talk about this telling tongue. This telling tongue. That, that he talks about this matter of pride. And he said one of the biggest proponents of pride is this matter of the tongue. The tongue, the tongue. Morris was saying he was talking to one guy, and a lot of people say, no, just because you know, uh, or hear what I say, or know something about my, my words, because you hear me talk, doesn't mean that you know my heart. Amen. But you know, your words can really say a whole lot about your thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pride uh, is something that will cause you to run off at the mouth. And, and usually people who are possessing pride usually lack to brag. They lack to brag. Yeah, I know it's quiet. I know it's going to be quiet. I mean, you ain't kind of thing that folks want to own up to. Uh, and it's not really, you don't really think it's applicable. But I would caution you to remember, look, listen, uh, because it might be applicable to your situation that, that the devil has a way of sneaking up on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And causing you to brag on yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can think you're all in the bag of chips, but before you know it, you start thinking about how good you are, how blessed you are, how gifted you are, how much better you are. Now, sometimes we start taking credit for what God is doing in our lives. We think it's really all about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've accomplished what I've accomplished because I'm gifted. I've accomplished what I've accomplished because I'm able to do 
these things I'm able to do. And, and pretty soon you start being like Joseph when you start getting the, 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 the press. You start believing your press. You see, Joseph had a problem. He was one of 11 sons. And he was gifted. He was gifted. Yeah, yeah. He was his daddy's favorite son. He had a robe of many colors. He yeah. thought he was better than the rest of them yeah. because he had a robe that none of them had. He, had gifts that none of that, and he had dreams, he had dreams, he had dreams, he had dreams, and his dreams uh, told him that he would be superior to his brothers. It's one thing to have a dream, it's another to be able to interpret the dream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. And you got to be careful with dreams, because sometimes we have dreams that we think are God-given, right. when they're really just our dreams. That we thank God gave us by destiny. Most, most of us, most of us, most of us, we had we had a dream that we were gonna play in the NFL. NFL, yeah, we're gonna be NFL football players. We're gonna be football players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had that dream. Now they ain't gonna admit it now. See, because when you get to be 73, almost 74, it's kind of shameful to think you're gonna get drafted in the NFL. Oh, they gone. They gone. They gone. They gone. They gone. Yeah, they, yeah, they gone. They gone. My man. My man Hardy, he can wear a Jim Brown shirt. That's all he can do. He can't. He can't be Jim Brown. He, he has to come to grips with the fact that that, that we not going we not gonna have no NFL days. You got to come to grips. That was a dream we had, but that wasn't God given dream. That wasn't right. a dream God was telling us was our destiny. Right. That was something we wanted. Yeah. Right. Right. Like I say, man, I know that's true. See, I know the truth. I'm worried about that, man. And, and so, and so, you know. Uh, uh, Come to Christian fact, I did have some false dreams, and so I got to make sure that my dreams are not just my dreams, but they are God-given dreams that God gave me right. to lead me to my proper destiny. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a witness here. Well, if I'm gonna be who God wants me to be, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to you need to take an example from Jesus, but Jesus demonstrated that when you know who you are, there's no need to brag about. It. Who you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Oh, that's the word right there. Yeah. Right. They should have been shouting right there. Yeah. That, that, that's why I say, so you need to know who you are. See, right. sometimes we make the mistake of thinking we are what we do. Yeah. Who, are you, who are you preaching? I'm preaching. I'm a pastor. No, no. That's what you do. Yeah. That's not who you are. That's yeah. your title. Right. But that's not. See, don't confuse your title with who you are. Amen. Right. Help me, Holy Ghost. I need to know who I am. And, and Jesus gives us the good example. Show me in Scripture anywhere where Jesus went around bragging that he was God's son. Savior of the world. He didn't do a whole lot of bragging about who he was. He knew who he was. So when the devil comes to him, the devil comes to him and to him, he, he always has to plant doubt. If you be the son of God. If you are God's son. Yeah, yeah. Turn, turn these stones into bread. And, and Jesus said, no, it is written. It is always a head of witness here. Yeah, yeah. Number one, you need to know who you are. When you know who you are, you don't have to tell nobody who you are. Right. You need to just, right. just brag on where you come from. Right. 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 So, 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 if you'll be the Son of God, now, I don't have to prove to you, devil. I don't have to prove to you, Satan, that I'm God's child. Right. I know I'm God's child. Right. Right. But God shows me how to respond to your actions. It, 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 it is written. It is written. Three times. It is written. It is written. The Bible gives you your response to the temptation of the devil. Amen. Amen. The Bible gives you your response when the devil strives to stop you from knowing who you are and whose you are. All I'm trying to tell you, you need to know who you are. And, and your tongue ought to reflect who you are. Your tongue reflect who you are by what you say. And what you yeah. say shouldn't have nothing to do with praying about it. Yeah. What you say shouldn't have nothing to do with what you think you've accomplished. You need to brag on the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to preach to me. I'm going to brag on the Lord. If, if you don't know who I am, I just need to know who I am. Yeah, yeah. And since I know who I am, I'm a child of God, I'm going to talk God talk. Amen. I'm going to imitate my dad. I'm going to talk like God talks. I'm going to use God's word. It is written. It is written. It is written. I'm going to use the language that God uses because that's the language that causes the devil to back up. Yeah. <coughs> I'm going to use the language that God uses because that's the language that enables me 
to not be intimidated by the devil, yeah, it yeah. causes me to focus on the Lord. Amen. I'm going to use the language God uses because that's what's motivating me to do the right thing, to be about my assignment, to be about uh, God's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's called me to minister to the world. Yeah, amen. Do I have a witness here? Not only do I see the telling tongue, but I also see the hurting heart. It ain't got nothing to do with the TV. You see, I swear to you, I'm not going to do that today. The, I ain't going to mess the sermon. I'm trying to get the same letter. The hurting heart. I said, there's a relationship between what you say and what's in your heart. Matthew 15, 18 says, but those things which proceed out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. And they defile them. And that's what Jesus said. Joseph's heart was all messed up because his mouth was messed up. You don't have to wonder what was in his heart to you see what's coming out of his mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. If he's bragging with his mouth, it's because he's got that mentality in his heart. As a man thinking in his heart, come on here, somebody. So is he. Yeah. That's the word. That's the word. Yeah, we got here before we go here a whole lot of it again. That then I need to know uh, uh, who I am, whose I am, and that's a relationship between my mouth. He said the tongue is a very dangerous thing. The tongue can really mess up something. The tongue can destroy. The tongue can do a whole lot of destruction. But more than that, the tongue is a tattletale. Yeah. The tongue tells people what you think. All right. Yeah. I wish I had. Y'all remember that story? Y'all remember that story? The little girl, the little girl uh, was standing there. My mama said, Baby, I want you to keep quiet. You know, you're not the smartest person in the world. I don't want to know how dumb you are. So don't say nothing. Just stay quiet. And the little girl said, Okay, mama. She stood there. Man came and said, Hey, ooh, you're a pretty little girl. What's your name? She didn't say a word. And he said, You don't know your name. She didn't say a word. He looked at her. He said, who your mama? And she didn't say that. He kept asking her, but she never said the words. When he, when he got to say, you're a dumb little girl. And he walked away. When her mama came back, said, mama, I didn't say a word. And he found out anyway. <laughs> 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 what I'm trying to get you to see today, <laughs> your mouth can reveal what's in your heart. If your heart is right, then your mouth won't say the right thing. Look at look at look at look at Joseph. Joseph, uh, uh, he said uh, he was better than his brothers because he had a dream when they were bowing down to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah well, that's, in, that's in Genesis 37. That, that he thought he was superior because because his 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 sheaves was 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 not bowing down. They were up and there were bowing down to his. his his flock, he, he had a superior position. His mom and his daddy and all his siblings were bowing to him. He was in a superior position, so he knew he was special. He figured his destiny was that of being superior to those around him. Do I have a witness here? And so he started bragging. He thought, first of all, he told them the dream. You know what I'm saying? Every dream God gives you is not for you to be telling for. When they think they are telling you you're superior, it's just another form of bragging. That right. You think you're better than somebody, so you want to tell them about your dream. And, and really, the revelation really shows that, that he had the right dream, but he had the wrong interpretation. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that when daddy died, and they were afraid that he was going to harm them because Jacob was dead, and he said, you know what? He said, you don't have to worry about it. I said, you meant it for evil, no, but God meant it for good. Yeah. I wish I had to this here. And, and, so, and so you thinking, you thinking that the interpretation of the dream is about people bowing down. You say, no, no, that like y'all bowing down to me now, but that's not the interpretation. Right. The interpretation was God blessed me to be here so that I could save the lives of these Egyptians. God blessed me to be here so I could save the lives of men and nations. God blessed me to be here so I can save your life and my daddy's life. That God saved me so
so I can be a blessing to men. I wish I had a witness here. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you that when God set you up for your destiny, it has something to do with you being a blessing to somebody else. Yeah. And the only thing you can get out of it is seeing people brag on you. If all you can see is yourself looking good, if you can only see it's all about you, you're really in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Mark says, the root of pride is insecurity. Yeah. Hmm. The root of pride is insecurity. Yeah. Then he had to add some more to it. He says, well, if you don't get insecurity, the later he adds inferiority and inadequacy. That usually when you see people bragging, it's because they think they're inferior. All right. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They they think they, 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 that that's why you keep lying like that. You, you, when you when you're inferior, they, they, they think they are inferior, so they got to say stuff to pump themselves up. When you think you're inferior, you got to talk to talk to make yourself feel better because you want to look better in front of somebody else. This this fellow, this fellow, this fellow, look at me. Uh, uh, Mark said he was he was 17 years old when uh, the Lord called him and he was gifted yet away. So this fellow who had a ministry decided to call him and put him over the youth to make certain presentations. Said when he got him, uh, he gave him a title, Associate Evangelist. Associate Evangelist. And so he got there, and, uh, the man would let him speak. And of course, this boy, no, no, no real form of training, I know lots, but he had, he had a gift. And he put him in front of all the people, talking to like thousands of young people at a time. And oh man, they were all, oh, they were just, just all, oh, they would just respond favorably. Everybody said how gifted he was and how great a job he was doing. And, and you, know, you know, it's kind of hard to keep getting that kind of press over and over Amen. without you start feeding it into that stuff. <laughs> It went along and he started feeling like he was he was really all that. He thought he was pretty special. He's pretty special. That, that he's pretty gifted and go, my Lord, look at all these people coming. And said, that man, this God is really using me. <laughs> but, but then they finally the devil, the devil uh, was messing with him, and God finally got through to him and let him know that he was taking his gift that God gave him to make him think he was better than what it was. You see, he thought that he had this response from people because he was gifted, because God had blessed him. He didn't realize he had the response because he was being used by God to help them. Amen. But he realized he had, a, he had a bragging problem. He realized he bragged too much. He, he had a part of his house and a bunch of people from his old uh, church were there and they were just talking and the whole time they were there, he was bragging about what God was doing for him in this new how many people he talked to and all this. And it finally dawned on him with the help of his wife and other folks. He had said, well, you know, you, you, you're kind of bragging too much. You, you're pushing people away. And so he said, you know, he prayed about it. He said, Lord, you know, I feel like the devil has crept in and, and he's using me. I, I really want to get rid of this, this mentality, this harsh, this bossy, uh, bragging mentality. Help me to get rid of it. Prayed about it and said when he prayed about it and was seeking God's direction, God told him, uh, quit the ministry. Hmm. But wait a minute, Lord, I, I want you to help me do better in ministry. And I want you to help me get rid of this problem. And I know the devil must be trying to use our communication. I'm hearing it wrong. You want me to say, I quit, quit the church, quit the ministry. I want you to get you a job that ain't got nothing to do with ministry. Right. They said, oh, this, this don't sound right. But finally, he came to grips with it. And when he left the ministry and started looking for a job, he has his, he has his first unbelieving experience where he realized when he's looking for a secular job, none of his ministerial experience qualifies him to do anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about your exegesis. You can't talk about your ability to lecture. You can't talk about your ability to, to win crowds over when you're trying to get a job. It really doesn't help you in your resume. Right. Right. You know, so, so he realized he didn't have any kind of qualifications to put on his resume that's going to help him get a job. And he finally gets a job. Guess what his job was? He, he, he became a, a night watchman. 
Security guard. Motel 6. They didn't do nothing, man. They didn't do nothing. I'm punching him. He's a night watchman at Motel 6. And, and when you're a night watchman at Motel 6, he said that was a very humbling experience because it, it had nothing to do with the stuff he had been before. Nobody's telling him how gifted he is, how special he is. It really doesn't take a whole lot of brain power to be a security guard at Motel 6. Right. Right. I have a witness here. Yeah. Well, he read that. Now, after he stayed there so long and he got whipped pretty bad, he thinks he's pretty humble. He calls back to the church and asks the dude to have any opening position. They gave him an open position. The position they gave him was that of uh, prayer partner. They want him to answer phones during the midnight shift. <laughs> Pray for people. He started working, he started working, he working. And he doing it, he praying, but he ain't feeling it, you know. He ain't got the title. He just a he just a prayer for Ask the phone. Then he was talking to a lady one night, and the lady was so she was kind of remember she'd seen him from the day before and said, she said uh, your, your voice sounds familiar. He said, uh, uh what's your what's your title? He says, My title is Associate Evangelist. Social evangelist. And she, oh, she was so impressed. With it. I thought I recognized you. And she got the phone. Well, he was working at night tell you but he was working at midnight shift as the phone with the guy who was over the ministry's son in law. And his son in law, Tommy, heard him when he was talking to the lady. He said, Why did you tell that lady with that? He said, Well, I told her because if she heard uh, what I did, that would make her feel better. Because she would think she was talking to somebody with more influence. He said, well, if she felt better because of what you told her, she would be feeling better for the wrong reason. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, 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 the brother of Tommy told him something. He said, he'll never forget. He said, you will never get to where God wants you to be by trying to be somebody you really aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you really want to be a blessing to others, you need to know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you know who you are, then God can use you to be a blessing to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm getting sleepy, I'm getting sleepy. <laughs> you, know, you know who you are. He says, he says, I need to know who I am. If I know who I am, then I can know how I can help somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Anytime you can help somebody because of your title, mm -hmm. might mean they got a pride problem themselves. Yeah, yeah. You need to know who you are. Y'all yeah, right. been good. Y'all give me five more minutes, I'm going to let y'all go. <laughs> On my first ending. <laughs> Children of the King. Amen. 
I said you need to know who you are. And you need to know whose you are. That is our true identity. And once I know my true identity, yes, pride has no power over me. I'm a child of the king. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Joseph felt the need to brag because he didn't know who he was. He thought he was Jacob's boy. Yeah. Yeah, but you need to know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jacob didn't even know who he was. Do you remember when Jacob left home? He wanted to get the blessing, the birthright. And the Bible said, uh, Isaac asked him, who are you? He says, I'm Jacob. No, he didn't. He said, I mean something. <laughs> Don't have a witness here. <laughs> well, he wasn't Esau. He was Jacob pretending to be Esau. Amen. Yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he thought he had to lie to his dad in order for his daddy to bless him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. And that's what's wrong. We got too many people trying to be blessed by their dad mm -hmm. instead of being blessed by the Lord. Mm -hmm. Do I have a witness here? Yeah. After he went and did what God wanted him to do, and he's on his way back home. Yeah. The Bible said he's wrestling with an angel. Yeah. And the angel said, let me go. And he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. You see, you don't just need a blessing. You need to make sure that the blessing is from the right soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I have a witness here. He finally wrestled long enough and decided he had, he had perseverance. The angel says, uh, what's your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. Yeah. And he said, no, it ain't Jacob no more. <laughs> no, no, you got your blessing, your Jacob blessing. That name Jacob means deceiver. <laughs> that name Jacob means trickster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That name Jacob means manipulator. You've had enough trying to bless your self blessings. No, you got to change your ways. And you're gonna start by changing your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're no longer named Jacob, but your new name is Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a witness here. Look at it. He on his way back home and he got all of his people in line, the people he cared the least about. He put them in front because he feels like Esau is going to destroy his family. The ones he loved, he got them in the rear. He feel maybe if God's going to save anybody, he'll save them. But the Bible declared when he met Esau, Esau had none of that on his mind. Yeah, yeah. During the 20 years he was gone, he's worried about his brother killing him. But while he was gone, the Lord was working that thing out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, uh, Esau missed the birthright. But he didn't want the birthright no way. Esau wanted the stuff. And when Isaac died, Esau got all of the stuff. And he no longer wanted to kill Jacob. But so when Jacob started trying to give him stuff, uh, he said, man, I got more stuff than you got. I don't need your stuff. I got my stuff. What are you talking about, Hey, Sometimes uh, you worried about your enemies uh, messing you up. Uh, and while you worried, God has already fixed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes you worried about what your enemy will do to you, and the devil has already made a way out of nowhere. No, 
now you don't need to worry about your enemies. Uh, you need to get your mind right. Uh, you need to stop trying to be, yes, a maneuver manipulator, a do-it-yourself person, and turn it over to the Lord. Uh, and he will uh, work it out. Well, uh, when you are uh, striving to run away from pride, uh, you need to understand that uh, two weapons you got to have. Yeah. Weapon number one is you need to know who you are. Yeah. Yeah, and weapon number two, you need to remember who you used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, you need to know who you are uh, and you need to know where you came from. You need to know who you are, but you need to remember where you started out. Well, when I know who I am, I know that I am a child of the King. Yes, I've been the born again. I've been blood washed. Yes, I've been washed in His blood. And I'm a believer that if you're on Jesus' side, you have every Thing that you need. You need to know who you are because if you know who you are, the devil can't mistreat you or mislead you. The devil can't depress you because you know who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tell you to look at Jesus, and Jesus always knew who he was. The Pharisees, the Sadducees kept trying to talk about him. They called him a wine bibber, a beatable. They called him everything but the child of God he was. But he didn't allow that to bother him because he knew who he was. They wanted to stone him and leave him for dead. He didn't argue with them. He just turned around and walked right through them. Because the same God who put him in that situation got him out of the situation. Yeah, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. You got to know you got to move in God's time. And you move in God's way. And you be who God wants you to be. And he can make a difference in your life. Well, preacher, what do I need to remember where I came from for? Because you need to understand you are who you are. Because the Lord blessed you in the first place. None of us are qualified, but we are all sinners saved by grace. None of us are qualified to think we are special. If you can remember where God brought you from, you don't have a whole lot of reason to brag, but you do have a reason to give him some praise. Do I have a witness here? Some of y'all think it be kind of funny. Well, let me tell you this story I ran across. It says a, a true prince, he had been going around traveling and he looked out of his window. And when he looked out of the window, he saw the most beautiful girl he had ever seen in his life. She wasn't anybody special. He knew she wasn't royalty. She was just a regular person. But she was a beautiful person. Just looking at her, he decided that he wanted her to be his wife. And so he decided that he was going to take on a disguise and live close to her and try to win her love so he could marry her and make her his own. Sure enough, uh, he allowed his beard to grow, uh, his hair to grow out. Uh, he wore some old ragged clothes uh, and he got close to her, uh, got him a little regular job, uh, got to know her, uh, met her, uh, and pretty soon he won her over. Uh, she uh, fell in love with him uh, and he was already pretty much in love with her. Uh, he asked her to marry him. Uh, and when she agreed to marry him, uh, he was so happy uh, because he knew she didn't marry him uh, because he was a prince. Uh, but she married him uh, because she was in love with him. Uh, well, uh, when he told her who he really was, uh, he brought her back to the palace. Uh, when he brought her back to the palace, uh, she was no more a pauper. Uh, but now uh, 
she was a princess. When he brought her back to the palace, yes, not only did he love her, but his mom and daddy loved her too. Because anybody he loved, they had to love him also. Yes, she was a princess living in the palace. She was a princess with all the power of a princess. But uh, yes, she didn't get beside herself because she remembered where she came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was a princess, but just a few days ago she was a pauper. She was a princess, rich with money, but just a few days ago she didn't have a whole lot of money in her pocket. She was a princess, but she wasn't always a princess. She remembered before the prince got her the kind of life she had to live. So even though she's enjoying the privilege of royalty, she remembered when she was a pope. If it hadn't been for the prince, she would still be a pope. Closing that But that's not going to my seat. I think you ought to know who you are. But y'all remember where he brought you from. Yes, you're a child of the king. You're brought with a prize. You're a child of the king with all the blessings of a king's child. But don't forget, you're a child of the king. You're somebody because God loves you. And if God loves you, you cannot be lost. If God Spread. 